He was blowing the most enormous smoke rings. And wherever he told one to go, it went. Up the chimney, or behind the clock on the mantelpiece, or under the table, or round and round the ceiling. But wherever it went, it was not quick enough to escape Gandalf. Pop! He sent a smaller smoke ring from his short clay pipe straight through each one of Thorin's. Then Gandalf's smoke ring would go green and come back to hover over the wizard's head. He had quite a cloud of them about him already, and in the dim light it made him look strange and sorcerous. Bilbo stood still and watched. He loved smoke rings, and then he blushed to think how proud he had been yesterday morning of the smoke rings he had sent up the wind over the hill. Now for some music, said Thorin. Bring out the instruments. Keely and Feely rushed for their bags and brought back little fiddles. Dore, Nore and Ori brought out flutes from somewhere inside their coats. Bomber produced a drum from the hall. Bifer and Bofa went out too and came back with clarinets that they had left among the walking sticks. Dwalin and Balin said, Excuse me, I left mine in the porch. Just bring mine in with you, said Thorin. They came back with vials as big as themselves and with Thorin's harp wrapped up in a green cloth. It was a beautiful golden harp and when Thorin struck it the music began all at once, so sudden and sweet that Bilbo forgot everything else and was swept away into dark lands under strange moons, far over the water and very far from his hobbit hole under the hill. The dark came into the room from the little window that opened in the side of the hill. The firelight flickered. It was April. And still they played on while the shadow of Gandalf's beard wagged against the wall. The dark filled all the room and the fire died down and the shadows were lost and still they played on. And suddenly first one and then another began to sing as they played deep-throated singing of the dwarves in the deep places of their ancient homes. And this is like a fragment of their song. Far over the misty mountains cold To dungeons deep and caverns old We must away a break of day To seek the pale enchanted gold the dwarves of yore made mighty spells While hammers fell like ringing bells In places deep where dark things sleep In hollow halls beneath the fells For ancient king and elvish lord Their many a gleaming golden hoard They shaped and wrought and light they caught To hide in gems on hilt of sword on silver necklaces they strung the flowering stars. On crowns they hung the dragon far. In twisted wire they meshed the light of moon and sun. Far over the misty mountains cold, to dungeons deep and caverns old, we must away a break of day to claim our long forgotten gold. As they sang, the hobbit felt the love of beautiful things made by hands and by cunning and by magic moving through him, a fierce and jealous love, the desire of the hearts of dwarves. Then something Turkish woke up inside him, and he wished to go and see the great mountains and hear the pine trees and the waterfalls and explore the caves and wear a sword instead of a walking stick. He looked out of the window. The stars were out in a dark sky above the trees. He thought of the jewels of the dwarves shining in dark caverns. Suddenly, in the wood beyond the water, a flame leapt up. Probably somebody lighting a wood fire. And he thought of plundering dragons settling on his quiet hill and kindling it all to flames. He shuddered. And very quickly, he was plain Mr. Baggins of Baggins underhill again. He got up trembling. He had less than half a mind to fetch the lamp, 
and more than half a mind to pretend to and go and hide behind the beer barrels in the cellar and not come out again until all the dwarves had gone away. Suddenly he found that the music and the singing had stopped and they were all looking at him with eyes shining in the dark.